Good morning. The Jewish and Christian Bible begin with the story of creation, Genesis 1. It's a cosmology. It begins with the marvel of light, let there be light. And it follows up with details of the emergence of night and day, waters, vegetation, plants, animals, calling it all good. And when humanity joined the world at the end of the story, it is called very good, the entire picture, the whole circle of creation. And it's for this reason that St. Thomas Aquinas, doctor of the church, in the Middle Ages talks about original goodness. He often talks about original goodness and original freshness. <clears throat> and I talk about original blessing. Surely today's hub telescope with its amazing gifts arriving daily in our computer screens of the beauty and the story and the history of the universe, how they are all blessings to us, for they reveal the surprise that we are as a species. Who could have guessed that from hydrogen and helium atoms gathering 13.8 billion years ago, we would live today with giraffes and elephants, whales, dogs and cats, rainforests, all on this special and beautiful and in some ways fragile common home, as Pope Francis calls it in his encyclical out ITC, our common home called Earth, Mother Earth. Let us take a look at a picture from Voyager 1 when Voyager 1 was leaving our solar system and looked back on its journey, looked back on Mother Earth. I think this picture is such an important icon for our generation, for everyone today on the Earth, <clears throat> because it puts things in perspective how tiny we are, how special, and yet, all these amazing creatures we share Earth with, of course, they're all endangered today because of us. Because we have lost our way. <clears throat> we have forgotten Mother Earth. Hildegard of Bingen, another saint and doctor of the church in the Middle Ages, says Mother Earth is mother of all. She is mother of all that is natural and mother of all that is human. For from her come the seeds of all. The earth, she says, must not be injured. The earth must not be destroyed. For in her are the seeds of all. When I first started transcending Hildegard many years ago, I shared the following poem in class for the very first time, telling students about Hildegard. And I read this poem. I am the one whose praise echoes on high. I adorn all the earth. I am the breeze that nurtures all things green. I encourage blossoms to flourish with ripening fruits. I am led by the spirit to feed the purest streams. I am the rain coming from the dew that causes the grasses to laugh the joy of life. I call forth tears, the aroma of holy work. I am the yearning for good. As soon as I finished that poem, first time I ever shared Hildegard in class, a young man spoke up. He said, I've just come back from living on an Indian reservation in South Dakota with Lakota people, where I lived for 16 years. And the medicine man, who was my spiritual director, he sounded exactly like that woman you just cited. So 12th century Benedict Navas sounds like a late 20th century Lakota medicine man. Are there more parallels between indigenous wisdom and pre-modern Christian mystics? Oh, yes. Julian of Norwich, 15th century mystic, said, God is the essence of nature. And God is the goodness in nature. God is the goodness in nature. 
This is creation spirituality. This is a Yahweh's tradition, the oldest tradition of the Bible, the author of Genesis 1. Now, Jesus was a peasant farmer close to the earth, and a carpenter close to trees and wood making, a craftsman, worked with his hands with trees <clears throat> and lumber. Pardon me. He was an artist who created parables and stories to share deep truths about God, the creator, and us, and the rest of creation. How often he invokes the lessons of seeds and birds, and rain, and wheat growing, and the rest, goats and sheep, bringing it all in to awaken us to the holiness of creation and its wisdom that surrounds us. So now we face our extinction as we face our shortcomings and mistakes as a species. The drive of empires and colonizing of greed and slavery, genocide toward indigenous peoples, and killing of their religions, attempts to kill their religion. But what did Jesus talk about? He told us to love our neighbor. Is our neighbor just our two-legged neighbors living in the apartment next door? Aren't trees our neighbors? They are loving us, caring for us, extending their fruits for food and their girth for building structures, making fires, and extending their ability to absorb and process CO2 and turn black, turn back global warming. Surely we have been invited to plant more trees, a lot more trees. There's a movement called Carbon Yoga, Carbon Dharma, that is urging us to change our eating habits so we can take less land, we can take land from livestock to grow trees instead of growing cattle, to re return all the livestock land growing cattle. And scientific studies have shown that if we did this, we would turn back, we would stop global warming and turn it back. We need to listen to the suffering of Mother Earth. Pope Francis urges us to do this in Laudate Si. Listen to the suffering of humans in the current war in Ukraine and the famines that are resulting in Africa and elsewhere. What is Earth saying? Of course it is saying that all our neighbors have rights. We should love them as we love ourselves, as Jesus taught. That was a teaching that cost Jesus his life. It cost Martin Luther King Jr. his life. And it cost Sister Dorothy Stang defending peasant farmers and the rainforest in the Amazon it cost her her life. It is hard to love others if we do not love ourselves. Jesus is saying we cannot love others if we do not love ourselves. The new story of creation from science, the web telescope story, should help us to love ourselves more. Seeing this picture we've shown from far away to our earth should help us to love ourselves more. Because it tells us what an amazing journey we have all been on. The earth and moon and sun, our special star, the supernova that birthed the sun and the elements of our bodies that we share with planets and stars in our vast universe. Who cannot taste a sense of the sacred in hearing this contemporary and scientific creation story of how very good our existence is? What an original blessing it is. A story of all our ancestors, two legged ones and more than human. Of course, we must protect the rights of those forests and fields and waters and seeds that are our ancestors and our ancestors also fed on these gifts of forest and feed and water and seed. Thomas Berry said, we will not save what we do not love. 
and we will not love what we do what we do not consider as sacred. Only the sacred will save us, he said. In the Christian tradition, the archetype for the sacred is the cosmic Christ. The cosmic Christ is the light in all things that holds all things together in heaven and on earth, as Paul says. Today, science tells us there are light waves in every atom in the universe. So every atom is another Christ. Every creature is another Christ. Yes, all beings have rights. Thomas Aquinas defines salvation this way. The first and primary meaning of salvation is to preserve things in the good. Preserve things in the good. So recovering our respect for sacred nature, beautiful, healthy nature, tree people, cloud people, finned, winged, and slithering people, all these are neighbors, requires a nature democracy that can in turn teach our human democracies to come to life again. This is why earth democracy and nature democracy is so precious. If you have a friendship with a dog or a cat and so forth, you know something of, about the preciousness of other beings. They have their dignity, their beauty. We did not make them, and they need protection from us now more than ever, as well as our love. Let us preserve things in the good. Let us love one another, all God's creation. Thank you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, all people. Fill us with love, the fire of love the fire of compassion, fire of caring, a fire for future generations, and not just generations of humans, but generations of all the beings that people this earth. Let us remember the, the elephants. Let us remember not to take for granted not to take for granted the healthy air, the blue skies, the green forests, the rain and waters, the cooling breezes, the health of Mother Earth. Let us cease taking it for granted. Give us the courage to change our ways, to let go, to reinvent our diets, to reinvent our economics and our politics, so that we put the health of creation, Mother Earth, ahead of our own greed and arrogance, narcissism. Pray that we may, through all our religious traditions, whatever they be, and those who claim none, that we may join hands and hearts, calling out to preserve Mother Earth, preserve the goodness of nature that has brought us here, this beautiful home, our common home. We ask this in the name of all your holy avatars, Jesus and Buddha, Muhammad and Isaiah, White Buffalo Woman, Sojourner Truth, Dorothy Staying, all the prophets you have sent us. May they wake us up and give us their courage and their joy. They may preserve the beauty for our common home. Amen.